Let's construct the two qubit computational basis states. First, let's consider the computational basis states for a single qubit Hilbert space. We can denote them as the ket labeled by zero. This has the matrix representation as a column vector with entries one, zero. And we also have another uh, orthogonal state, which is labeled by one. So we have one inside the ket. And the matrix representation of this state is zero, one as the entries of a column vector. These two states are mutually orthogonal and they are normalized. If you take the inner product of this state with itself or this state with itself, you'll get one. So this is an orthonormal basis. We can represent any single qubit state as a linear combination of these two basis states. So this is actually a two-dimensional Hilbert space. The states live in a two-dimensional Hilbert space, so only two basis vectors are required. Now let's consider a two-qubit system. A two-qubit system has two single-qubit systems combined into one big system. So we have a four-dimensional Hilbert space. And we're going to require four orthonormal basis vectors to form our computational basis. So how can we construct this computational basis? We're going to have to take the tensor product of these states. So first, let's have a look at how to actually take the tensor product in general. So how will we do this? What we have to do is write down a general definition. So let's say we have some general column vectors that look very similar to these ones over here. So let's consider this column vector with entries a0 and a1. We're going to take the tensor product with another column vector that has entries b0 and b1. What is this going to give us? Well, we can imagine putting this second vector inside this first vector and then scaling this vector by these entries. I'll write down what that actually means. So we can take a0 and use it to scale this column vector of b0 and b1. And we can do that down here as well. We can take a1 and we can also use that to scale b0 and b1. And we can put brackets around this because this is going to be a column vector with four entries. So let's write down all of those entries. What are they going to look like? Well, first we're going to have a0, b0. Then we're going to have a0, b1. Then a1, b0. And finally, a1, b1. We're going to put some brackets around this, and this is a column vector. Now, this is how to generally compute the tensor product of two of these column vectors. And these column vectors, they each live in a two-dimensional Hilbert space. So this is a vector that describes a single qubit and another vector that describes a single qubit. And when we use this tensor product operation, we create this big matrix over here, which is a column matrix with four entries. And you can actually label these terms in this column vector with some indices. We can call this one the 0, 0 term, the 0, 1 term, the 1, 0 term, and the 1, 1 term. So those are the four entries in this column vector. Let's take this general definition and use it to combine these orthonormal basis vectors. So we have an orthonormal basis for a single qubit system, and we also have another orthonormal basis for a second single qubit system. Now we just have to combine that together, and that's going to give us an orthonormal basis that describes the entire four-dimensional Hilbert space of this two-qubit system. So first, let's consider the zero, zero state. So the zero, zero state can be written using this notation. We can write zero, zero inside of the ket. This is shorthand notation for zero, zero. And this is also shorthand notation for zero tensor product zero. And what is this going to look like? Well, if we use this definition, what we're going to get is a column vector that looks like this. We're going to have one, 
zero, zero, zero. There's just going to be a one in the first entry. And that entry is the zero, zero entry. Now, let's have a look at the next choice. So the next choice could be zero, one. So zero, one is going to look like this. We have zero, one. That is shorthand notation for uh, zero, one, like this, where we separate out the kets. And this is shorthand notation for zero tensor product, the state one. And what is this going to be? Well, we're again going to get a column vector with entries 0, 1, 0, 0. So now the 1 is in the 0, 1 location. That's this one over here. So you can imagine this as taking this matrix over here and putting this matrix inside this matrix. So only uh, we're only going to get non-zero contributions from the first two terms because we have a 1 over here. And because this term is 0, the first term in here is going to be 0, and the second term is going to be 1. So that's what happens if we put this one as uh, inside this matrix, and we use that 1 to multiply this matrix. We're also doing that down here, but multiplying by 0 just gives us 0. And we have two more combinations. The next two combinations are going to look like this. We're going to have the 1, 0 combination, and that can be written as this combination of kets. And we can explicitly write that out as one tensor product zero. And what is this going to be? Well, it's also a column vector. And the entries of this column vector are zero, zero, one, zero. So now it's the third entry that is non-zero. That is the one, zero entry. And finally, let's have a look at our last computational basis vector. That is the one, one term. And the 1, 1 term can be written like this, as two kets, or it can be written explicitly as the tensor product of the one state with the other one state. And that's going to give us another column vector, and the entries are going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. So the last uh, entry is non-zero. That is the 1, 1 term. So these are our four computational basis states. And they are sufficient to describe any state of this two-qubit system. Here's another thing that we can actually do. We can take any general state, let's call it psi, and we can write that as a linear combination of these guys. So we can write that with coefficients alpha, 0, 0. That's a coefficient for this 0, 0 state. Then we can have alpha, 0, 1 as the coefficient of the 0, 1 state. And then we'll have alpha 1, 0 as the coefficient of the 1, 0 state. And finally, we're going to have alpha 1, 1 as the coefficient of the 1, 1 state. So any two qubit state can be described as this linear combination. All we have to do is specify these coefficients. And how would we find these coefficients of a general state psi? Well, we can take the inner product of this state with these basis vectors. So if we take the bra version of the 0, 0 state and take the inner product over here, that's just going to uh, kill all of these terms. All of these terms will go to 0 because they are mutually orthogonal basis states. And we'll just be left with this term over here, which will uh, this term will just evaluate to 1 times this alpha 0, 0 coefficient. So this is how we can represent any two qubit state in terms of the computational basis. We can also use this computational basis to construct matrix representations of two qubit operators. They are four by four matrices that act on column vectors. In general, any uh, two qubit state is represented by some uh, column vector with four entries. And we can use a four by four unitary matrix to act on that state. And that's going to describe some kind of operation. You can see other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist where we use this two qubit computational basis if you click over here.